Okay, so in this video, we'll be discussing on a new topic called OSPF stubs. Okay, so before we get into that, so OSPF stub is one of the most uh, widely used option because it really helps the administrators to minimize the number of advertisements. It also minimizes the size of the routing table. So let us see how exactly it provides a good option. So if you remember, we did some stubs in EHRP also. In EHRP also, there is a concept of stub, but it is totally different when we compare with OSPF stops. So let's try to understand. OSPF stops helps in reducing the size of the routing table. That is something I can say. What is the use of stops means? I can simply say it helps in reducing the size of the routing table and also minimizes the overhead on the routers, especially on the end routers. You can see the end routers. So to understand this, what I'm doing, uh, I did is I got some routers here. I'll explain you my topology. It's not uh, much clear. You can see these routers, these area routers. So these are all the routers used in area zero. These are the area zero routers. So I got some routers here. Assume this is my head office connecting to some of my branch offices. These are the three branch offices which I'm using. And then these are all my end locations. I got a very big network. Assume that I got more than 200 plus networks in my organization. So it's a very big and complex network design so head office connecting to all my branch offices and then all my branch offices are again connecting to my uh, end locations so very small small branch offices and as it is a very big network so what we did is we designed them into multiple areas so we designed in such a manner that area zero is at the center so assume that this is your area zero and then i got some multiple areas this is my area 10 and also this is my area 20 and this is my area 30. So what I did is I grouped some routers into multiple areas and I designed them in multiple areas. Okay. And also I got some routes coming from external routes. External routes means the routes which are advertised. I got some more branch offices on this side. This part you can see on the left side where I wrote EHRP and RIP. So these branch offices or these are the locations which are not running OSPO protocol but they are running something other than OSPF like EHRP, RIP or it can be any other protocol. And we are doing redistribution of uh, these routes into OSPF. So which means automatically these routes are also coming here into my routing table. So it's a very big network. Assume that I'll give some, I'll use some rough figure, rough number for understanding. So I'll be giving some, assume that there are some 50 networks present in area zero. Assume, just assume, okay. There are some 50 networks lan van everything includes 50 networks present in area 0 and also have some 50 networks in area 10 50 networks in area 20 and 50 networks in area 30 so 50 50 50 means around 200 networks i have inside the ospf and i have some 100 networks 100 networks i have some coming from external routes nothing but come and learn from different protocol and they are redistributed inside the ospf okay so now if I go to any router, so let, let's try to understand what is the problem in this topology. There's no problem. It works fine because, you know, area zero is at the center. Everything is okay, but we can make it more better by using a concept of stops. So let's try to understand what is the general problem we have in this type, in this type of network where we have very big topology and we have a lot of ne big network size. So if I go to any one of these routers, any one of these routers, especially the end routers, and if I issue a command called show IP route OSPF. So when I give the command called show IP route OSPF, you know, you know, if you go to any one of these router and give show IP route OSPF, generally you'll see O routes. So the meaning of O routes, if you remember we discussed in the last session, O represents the routes coming from the same area, which means from the same area, you'll see how many O routes so I'm talking about the routers in any one router you can take. So you'll see only the routes coming from the same area means I think I can see around 50 networks or 50 lines as O routes. It can be any network, 10 network, 20, 30 network, whatever the networks we have. I can see something around 50 networks, right? Because they are from the same area. So O routes, you'll see how many? 50. Because from the same area, I can see the routes. So next thing, you can also see not only O routes, you also see something called OIA routes. OIA nothing but the routes coming from a different area. 
different area means if you see the diagram here i got i'm i'm receiving the routes from area 20 area 10 and area 0 so these are considered as different area routes other than my area so as of now my area is area 30 so any routes coming from different area is nothing but osp of inter area routes so how many lines you can see so we are assuming each area is having 50 networks so you can see 50 networks from this area 50 networks from this area and 50 networks from this area which means you can easily see 150 lines or 150 networks displayed as oia and also one almost 150 lines and also apart from that you can also see something called oe1 oe2 you know oe1 or oe2 represents osp of external routes it can be metric type 1 metric type 2 in osp of which means the routes coming from different protocol and they are getting redistributed into the OSPF. So you'll also see the routes coming from this side, but they will be displayed as different output E1, E2 routes. So now how many E1, E2 routes? 100 external routes. So if you just figure out, if you count the total number of networks, you can easily see not 200, it's, it's more than 300 networks because you know, if you have at least 100 branch offices, assume you have 100 branch offices, and each branch office is having three networks. So you know, one LAN, two WANs, or it can be more than that. So easily you'll get 300 networks in your routing table. So now, which means from this, we can conclude that, from this, I can, from this basic understanding, I can come to a final conclusion that your routing table is very big. This is something what, because you know, 300, it's too big. So my routing table is very big and it's really because you know if you have a big routing table it really uses more resources to see a specific route in the routing table and also it has more overhead so now this won't be a problem with this router because maybe this is a core router it's a very high speed router running 7000 7, series routers maybe these routers also don't have any problem maybe they are running 3600 series routers distribution level routers so they may have enough memory to maintain those routing tables and process them. But now the problem issues come with these lower level routers where we are running your 1600, 1700 series routers, 2500, 2600 series routers, which are generally low level series routers, maybe 800 series routers. They don't have enough memory to maintain such a big routing tables. Maybe if they have, even if they have the enough memory to maintain such a big routing tables, Still, it requires a lot of processing to maintain such a big table and to do lookup because you know every time there may be a lot of traffic moving from here and there because you know every time a packet comes on the router from the LAN or from the WAN, it has to check the routing table, forward the packet. So it really uses a lot of resources. So we need to minimize it. So this is something what default, we cannot really stop this. This is the default behavior, but we can optimize these things by using a concept of stubs. So OSPF, they added a concept of stub where by using this concept, we can really minimize the size of the routing table and also which again in turn minimizes the uh, routing table size and also in turn it minimizes the overhead on the routers. Okay, so which again in turn increases the efficiency of the routers, especially the low series routers. So they introduce something called stops. So let's try to understand what is stop. Stop here, we can make a specific area as a stop. We cannot make a single router as a stop. Here, we are making a complete area as a stop. And in this stop, there are two options. So first one is stop. Stop, what it is going to do is it is going to stop external routes. It is going to stop the external routes instead of external routes it is going to send a single default route it is going to send a single default route instead of external routes now what is exactly that means so it's it means it is very simple here so just need to understand the basic methodology so if you see so here what i'm going to do is this is the default routing table which we discussed just now the default routing table will have osp of routes coming from the same area OSP of inter area routes coming from a different area and also OSP of external routes coming from redistribution through redistribution we can say. So when I use a normal area it increases the my size of the routing table. So what I can do is I can make a complete area as a stub. So you cannot make a single router as a stub. So I'm going to make area 30 as a stub. 
Now once I do that, what happens? So once I do that, what happens is automatically your routing table looks slightly different. So how it looks is, so there won't be any changes, uh, much changes like you'll see the same O routes as it is. How many routes? O routes. Same 50, no changes. Same. And also you'll see OI routes also same. How much? 150 networks, maybe 150 lines. But, but the difference between the normal routing table and after configuring the stub is you will not see this you will not see this one instead you'll see o asterisk ia as one line you'll see a single default route now this default route is something not i'm creating i'm just configuring only one command when i come to the lab i'll show you the practical implementation of stops but just try to understand uh, what exactly it is going to do it is going to stop these external routes it will remove the external routes from the routing table and replaces with a single default route so, but now the question is automatically it will do that after adding one command. But now what is the impact of this and why it is doing that? Let me explain you. So why it is required because you know, all the external routes, if they really want to access or enter into the stub area, whichever the area you want to make as a stub, they should go via which router? Right? They have to go via area border router, which means if you want to reach any external route, so in simple I can say reverse, I can tell that like this, if any of your internal router, the, all these routers inside the area 10, area 30, which is supposed to be stub, which we you are supposed to configure as stub, if they want to go to any external route, any external route means any of these 100 routes, it should go via area border, which means there is only one route, you know, wherever you want to go, you have to go via border router only. So now, when you have only one single route, you don't really need to maintain all these routes. So what we can do is, once I configure this as a stub, so config stub is very easy, just one command, area 30 stub, inside the router mode. So practical part, don't worry, it's just one line command. But the main reason here is to understand why we do that and what is the impact on the routing table or what is the impact uh, once we configure that command. And once we do that, automatically you'll see o routes as it is no changes o routes as it is 50 50 whatever whatever is here whatever is same and oia remains the same no changes but this external routes will be replaced with one single default route. you'll see o asterisk here which means all your internal routers in simple i can say all your internal routers means maintain the default route so that default route is actually a replacement for external routes so that's what I said here. It is going to stop the external routes and instead of external route, there will be a single default route, which means, so when these external routes are coming from here, when you configure it as a stub, this border router says, these are actually stub routers, stub area, and there is no external routes allowed inside. But instead of external routes, I'm going to send a default route, which means if any of these router want to reach any external routes, they'll say, please come to the my router, that is border router, and I am the one who is going to maintain a more specific route. So now the behavior will be like this. So let me explain you the behavior here. So the border router, whichever is area border router is going to maintain a more specific route, which means the border router will maintain each and every external route information. But when it sends to internal routers, it is not going to send those external route. It says you are a stub area you don't need to maintain the external route information. I'm going to maintain that, but you maintain only a default route. So you maintain only one line information, only default route. And if you don't, if you want to go to any network, let's say this external route, 50 route network, and the internal router want to go to 50 network, it will simply send to the border router saying that, I want to go to 50 network, but I don't have that information. So the border router knows exactly where is 50 and how it is learned. So it will make sure that it reaches the 50 dollar network and the packet return back and then returns back to their destination. So that is what exactly stub, that is how stub exactly works. So when I practically implement, you'll really have some more clear understanding, but there's one thing you need to keep in mind, just try to see the difference, try to understand the difference in the output before configuring the stub. This is actually before configuring the stub, your routing table will have all the routes, nothing but 
you have O routes, you have OA routes, you have E1, E2 routes. But once we configure stub, you all your external routes will not be sent in to the internal routers. But instead, it is going to send only a single default route. So this is very, very useful concept and very widely used because, you know, internal routers no need to maintain information. So they you're almost reducing 100 lines. You can see here. If you try to see the difference, you're almost reducing 100, 100 lines as per our assumption. We're assuming that there are 100 networks coming from external. So in the real production network, if you have thousands of networks coming from external routes, so you are minimizing many lines. So this way we can really reduce the size of the routing table and also we can increase the efficiency of the routers uh, so that they can process the packets much faster than a normal routing. Okay, so that is one concept of stops. So to implement and verify this, so we can implement and verify. I'll come to the implementation, but before that, let me explain you OSPF stub. OSPF stub, what we understood is all your E1, E2 routes will be replaced with one single default route. So output wise, you'll see something like this. So now they also have one more option called OSPF totally stub. So this totally stub is a little bit more advanced and far more better than normal stub. Now how it is better because let me explain you how it is better. Like in the stub, we, di we discussed that all your external routes will be replaced with single default route, right? But in case of totally stub, not only external routes means in case of totally stub, which is some advanced stub, it is going to replace your external routes as well as it is going to replace your OSP of inter area routes with a single default route. Now what is required? Again, if I come to my diagram here, if you try to see here, if I configure this particular routers or area 30 as totally stop. So when I configure totally stop, any of the internal routers, if they want to go to any other area, any other area, they should go via area border router. If these internal routers, if they want to go to any external route, they should go via. So which means, Wherever you want to go, you need to go via area border router. So, which is really same thing. We are into the same situation here. So now in case of totally stop, wherever you want to go, let me just come down to the same thing. So if you want to go to any external route, an external route means here, or if you want to go to any other area, you have to go via area border router, which means even if you want to exchange the routes between the two or more different areas, Still, you need to go via area border router, right? So that's what OSPF totally stub is doing. So OSPF totally stub is actually replacing not only your external routes, it is also replacing your external routes with a single default. Which means, if you check the routing table, O routes will be 50. If you check normal routing table, have 300 lines. Now you will see O remains the same, but instead of these two, you will have a single default route. Which means we are minimizing almost 250 lines as per our assumption, okay. So there's a basic difference between, so now to configure there's only one, one command, just one line command, there's no difference, but understanding this stub and totally stub is important. So let's, let's try to verify practically. I got a simple demonstration of a lab here, okay. So NSS is not so stubby, I'll, I'll come to this in our next session, okay. So we'll be discussing on that. So OSP of stops and totally stops. So to implement and verify, okay.